right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Izzy Gassell, who is in Massachusetts. How are you doing, Izzy? I'm good, John. Thanks. Nice to be here. Yeah, and Izzy G and Company is Izzy's company, and he uses humor to provide to improve workplace environments and relationships by using you know um, uh, theater theater techniques uh, and, and improvisation and humor, as we said. And what we're going to talk about today is applying humor and improv techniques and principles and practice to your personal and professional life. Okay, Izzy, let's dive into it. Right? Sure. Um, if we're talking about if we're talking about we're talking about any role, but we talk about sales in particular, it's often it's a performance based uh, yeah. role at the best of times. Um, so, how do you help? Talk to me how you help bring in you know humor and impact yeah. to help people. Um, for the last twenty five years, my work has has um, started and evolved with an understanding um, whether it's in sales. Let's talk about relationships in, in general, yeah. of which sales is one where who shows up, who you are in that relationship, not only depends on what you believe you yourself to be, but very much, and in, 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 in an instance sometimes, what the other person believes about you. They make, we make judgments so quickly, whether you're, you're reading uh, uh, studies about, how, uh, about influence or about who we trust, it turns out that we make very quick judgments. So. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can't control what other people say or do or think about you, but you can control how you show up. And what I found is that that the principles of, of humor, which I learned as studying stand-up comedy and writing in, in New York, I was a stand-up comedian and a teacher before I became a, a facilitator, and uh, improv techniques that are not based that are not used for improv theater, which is what improv theater people train for, but uh, is very applied to outside situations. So most of us improvise a good part of each day. Things go other than planned. So the idea is what I'm, my work is about taking the principles of humor and improv, taking them out of the, the theatrical performance aspect and say, what makes those people successful? being able to think on their feet, being able to hold an audience, being able to tell stories, being able to be comfortable with expecting things not to be perfect. So mm -hmm. that's the the umbrella of why I think these these skills, and they are skills, um, are so practical in everyday life. Yeah, no, that's, it's pretty fascinating, Izzy, because, uh, I mean, most people, as you, as you said, I mean, most people are familiar with improv from the theater or from TV, as, as you say on your site, you know, whose line is it anyway? Um, you know, we, back in the day in Ireland, we grew up with that on Channel 4 um, in, from Britain, the, whose line is it anyway? And it was obviously, oh, came over here as well. Highly successful. But to your point, the whole the whole concept behind improv and things like whose line is it anyway is you don't know what's coming. You don't really know what's coming next and you have to, react and flex to it and, and and add to it and as you say that's what sales is and in, in generally speaking you really don't know what's coming next yeah the 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 carryover the, the similarity or the the shared vision is that both the performance aspect and the real life aspect deal in goals so improvisers have a goal um, whatever the name of the story, uh, the game is one word at a time mm -hmm. or, uh, but they also know that there's more than one path to the goal. So if, if you and I are playing a game and I'm expecting you to say a word specifically and you don't, I'm thrown off. But if I am open to whatever comes and be and confident in being able to respond, then it seems to flow more. So, so what I really got is that the in, in improv theater and stand-up comedy, the goal is entertainment, uh, laughter, comedy. In life, the skills that those people train and practice for. So, for example, in stand-up comedy, it's the the arc of the story, the setup, the conflict, the punchline. The punchline is always a shift in point of view, um, uh, which makes sense within the context. In sales, for example, if a salesperson goes in and and 
even with the best of intentions, says, I know what's best for this client, or, oh, this client needs this, I can give them that because here's my product. A, the client may not really be aware on the heart level what they really need because they're running from emotion. And B, the salesperson is not open to listening to what's possible. Where's my curiosity? What else is, can I offer? Can I be a better listener and ask questions? Um, all of those are skills that you that you learn in, in in the performing arts. Yeah, and and I'm I'm glad you raised that, especially that what you just said about the fact that you know improv people, you know, they have a goal, but they know there are multiple routes to get there, so they're prepared to go different routes if necessary. One of the things I think that uh, a lot of uh, some salespeople fall down on is just what you said is they go in with the goal in mind, but a singular path to get there, as opposed to having yes. This would be a nice path to go, but if we can't go that path, then I can go here or here. So having backup outcomes, right, rather than just having one outcome in Have, mind. Exactly. And, and this is where when I work with lawyers, I um, just did a program on mediation and improv. Um, when I work with lawyers or, or, or mediators, negotiators, what I've learned in, is that there's a difference between our goal and our position. Many times in a discussion, people are stuck in the, their position. This is the only way. It's right or wrong. We may have the same goal, but if you say, let's go left, and if I say, let's go right, and we fight about whether we go left or right, we lose sight of the fact that we have the same goal. We want to get mm -hmm. to the same place. So really what we're talking about is an understanding of the flexibility of positions while keeping the goal solid. Yeah, and, and like you said, I mean, a lot of that comes from, from preparation and confidence because it's very easy to get thrown, uh, you know, where you're, especially when you're expecting or trying to go down a particular path and the person keeps going down a different path. As you said, if you start to resist that heavily, you end up with a conflict. If you go, okay, how can I explore this and how can I get us, how can working together, can we get to the same point? That's a different approach. Yeah, the curiosity factor is key in both of them. And I would say, and again, going to sales, but also in many other uh, aspects of it, uh, the confidence is uh, from being able to be imperfect and vulnerable. And that's what the training and the practice does, because you, you never play the same improv game twice. Comedians always study um, uh, dealing with hecklers. Salespeople learn about objections. <laughs> you yeah. know, so it's, it's, it's parallel in that it, we are not coming in as the, the word, the only way to say this. We are coming in with the curiosity of how can I get to my goal and, and, and to the other goal? And this is why I do my work with relationships is, is the same thing is it's active listening. It's, it's creativity, it's curiosity, and it's letting go of the position. Yeah, no, I, I'd say, yeah, I mean, relationships are, I mean, we're pretty much improvising all the time, aren't we? <laughs> and we're, <laughs> we're getting, we're, we are, right, yeah. <laughs> and we're getting thrown a lot of different, uh, different ways to go. Um, one thing I noticed, you have a, you, you have a course on practice uh, spontaneity, and I just thought that was fascinating, because uh, sometimes when people, you, you want to, especially when you're engaging with sales, right? You want the salesperson to be excited about their product or service. They want to be excited about solving your problems. Sure. Um, but as we said, you also want them to, you want them to surprise you. I mean, I think that's the thing. Sometimes you want to, in a good way, <laughs> we're quite often surprised in a bad way, right, but right, in a good right. way. And so that idea, and that comes to from where you're, where you feel like the salesperson has just had the thought for the first time about this particular thing and is excited. So that that idea of practice spontaneity for me is fascinating. Yeah, the the, the practice spontaneity is 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 again why comedians rehearse their act, and because it's not about the joke. Look, if it was just about the material, everyone would do Jerry Seinfeld's material because those mm -hmm. things are funny. But it's it's about the persona who. who who, who presents it and improvisers practice the same games because they're different every time. So the, the surprise aspect, first of all, that's where laughter comes from when, when, when we're surprised, but the surprise on the client side or the relationship side is that when you can respond to an unexpected event with grace, with, with um, uh, moving forward with flow, so to speak, and vulnerability, you build the relationship. Uh, because you see you're not perfect, but you are confidence inspired. So that's really um, a, a powerful skill.
Uh, and and there are and there are skills obviously for dealing, as you said. I mean, they uh, comedians learn how to deal with hecklers, learn to deal with the objections. Um, you have another one that's the the elephant in the room is laughing. I think that's a that's a fascinating one too. Because let's face it, what do we normally do is try and avoid the elephant in the room, try and pretend the elephant's not there, um, right. stand in front of the elephant if necessary, and right, try and right. block it. <laughs> Exactly, and 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 the, the the title comes from the fact that very often the elephant in the room announces themselves because of their gender neutral in my in my world <laughs> uh, themselves through humor. People will make a a, a, a side joke or, or will laugh at something that makes them nervous. So the idea for that program um, is that it's important to understand how humor works in an organization and a relation. Are people using humor to build a connection? We laugh together. Are people mm -hmm. using humor to put other people down? Are people using humor to distract from difficult situations? Um, these are all things, by the way, that, that are uh, in my LinkedIn program. And I have one on a LinkedIn learning on humor in the workplace and one on leading with applied improv, where both of these concepts com come into place. But that's, I think humor is, is an underutilized and underrecognized resource for people. Mm -hmm. So, so talk to me a little bit about that, though, humor, because let's face it, so um, humor is often, what's funny is in the ear of the beholder, often, exactly. right? Um, it has cultural, you know, there's differences, people laugh at different yeah. things, some things or whatever. So I was, I was think that you have to be careful in your use of humor. So how, when you work with people, how do you, how do you uh, help them use humor, but at the same time, be careful and use it in a way that it's not going to, it's not going to like do great one place and, and horribly somewhere else. <laughs> well, that, that, that's the foundational question. And I would say that some, you don't know because it is, uh, it's like love and hate. You know, you could love somebody and not, and not, and not be reciprocated. You can love somebody else and they will re reciprocate. Um, I would say that again, one of the things that I, I, when I do the coaching is first recognize where is your sense of humor coming from? Yeah. What do you, what's natural to you? What do you laugh at spontaneously? Secondly, when you're thinking of humor in a workshop or a presentation, what's understand where your heart is. Are you, are you trying to build a relationship? Are you trying to put someone down? When you put someone down, the language itself means you raise your status. Are you um, distracting? Uh, are you lifting spirits? And who are you aligned with? So context is very important in humor, understanding what your sense of humor, what your purpose is. And because humor is a status in, in organizations and in groups, people who have a perceived sense of humor have high status. So sometimes people try to raise their status by uh, pushing out humor where it's inappropriate. And then finally, it's about context. Like you say, you're not gonna tell the same joke to your kids as you do to your friends, as you do to your grandparents. So, some yes, but not all. So yeah. know know the know your audience. That's the best version. Yeah. No, I, I I agree, and I think just just you know, yeah, know your audience and just be careful about you and, and practice. We've said before, like you know, practice. Or if you're going to do spontaneous humor, just be careful. Maybe think it through in your head before you say it out loud. The thing, yeah. And the thing about spontaneous humor is, if if something happens that's funny, and, and I what what comedians, what humorists do is they write that stuff down. They don't memorize it. There's something funny. You see a funny headline. You overhear a, a comment in the supermarket. You put it down, and then you could put context to it. You say, you know, I was <laughs> I was without my mask for the first time at the supermarket, and I, and I heard this. So you don't have to make everything up because humor comes in, and it's about capturing it and holding it and then using it um, in, in the right context. No, no, absolutely. And then what do you say to people who say, well, but, you know, is he – I'm just not very funny. You know, I'm, I'm not good at that kind of thing. I don't, yeah. it doesn't really work for me. Yeah, I, I would, I would ask them to separate funny from humor. Funny mm -hmm. is, is more about joke telling and, and entertaining an audience. Humor is about seeing the world and incongruities and, and the different points of view. That's why children say funny things to adults. A kid has one point of view on the situation. An adult has a different one. We laugh at the child because we can see the different perspective. And every time a person laughs, they are exhibiting their sense of humor. So pay attention. You have a sense of humor. Yeah. And I think the other part, too, is uh, is obviously not trying to be something 
try and be to not try to be something that you're not right trying always to be, true yeah, yeah. yeah i love this there's there was a show that um ricky gervais did in in the uk a while back um uh, with this other i can't remember the, the afterlife name no it was before it was um it was small world or something it was he uh, you, but there's a, he, he's the agent and uh, or uh, but there's a scene when Liam Neeson co comes in and Liam Neeson tells Ricky Gervais and, and Stephen Merchant that he wants to do comedy, right? And then he starts going through his material, but he delivers it all in the same way as his characters in those, uh, you know, those violent revenge movies he does. Right, I remember and of course that, it's yeah. Not, yeah. Yeah, so it's not funny, you know, so it's hilariously funny, but it's not funny, um, you know, his delivery. So I think my point being is is not try to be somebody you're not right you know whereas it, it, what was funny about that is he tried to be a stand-up comedian delivering everything in a very threatening and dark way which right, was totally right. unfunny yeah um so how do you help people just make sure that they don't stray into creating personas that aren't real well it goes back to uh pay it start paying attention to what you find naturally funny um pay attention to who you find funny in other words what who do you relate to um, as, as your style, and then also who do, who is opposite from from your style, and and then begin to collect things that are funny and humorous to you that are about the world in general, and then share them, and you actually can build your, your sense of humor because your reputation will expand even as much as if you wear a humorous pin or if you have a tie that that people go oh that's funny they go oh you know that that, that guy he's got a sense of humor they may not even tell you but you're building the perspective and it's very much about perspective yeah no that's that's a really good that, that, that's a really good point and and I love that idea about actually looking at other people so being deliberate about it because at the end of the day uh, you know you want to be authentic too and, and you want to be authentic thing. and because people don't know about their sense of humor they don't understand what authentic is for them and then what about the balance of making sure that you don't stray into using humor too much, right? Because, I mean, there could be a temptation where you, you suddenly start to think, oh, this, this is working. So now I'm just going to lay, layer in more and more and more. And before you know it, you're doing a stand-up comedy show as opposed, opposed well, to... Well, if people are laughing, it's not a bad thing. If people are yeah, not well, laughing, but they go, mm, uh, yeah. or, or they go, are you done? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's always, is, you, look, you're is this thing on? You're <laughs> <laughs> you know that the, the the audience is always right. They may not be the best audience, yeah. and another audience will be better. But but um, it, it, take take your cues. Take your yeah. cues. Yeah, because I mean, I'm just saying there could be a temptation to go. You know, if you are getting the laughs to keep going, but you may end up not getting your own your message. Oh, for across. sure. The, you know the 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 evangelistic attitude of the converted people who are, find themselves making other people laugh. It's intoxicating. And then you go, I could do this, I could, because it's so um, it, it, it enabling. So, mm -hmm. so there's a responsibility to it, to uh, authenticity again. Um, pick your spots and uh, see, uh, have a purpose to make people's lives mm -hmm. better. Yeah. And I think in, in the context of sales that we're talking about is like, you know, is the goal, did you reach your goal in the, with the, the meeting or the interaction or did you reach a secondary goal or whatever, or did you just make people laugh? <laughs> yeah, you know, that, that that's a good point. When, when I'm doing workshops, sometimes they, they I'm looking for something, an activity where people will laugh with each other from my experience. I know they will as a way to build. That's my goal is to, to build rapport. And, and sometimes as a performer, People are in the uh, audience um, receptive mode where they don't want to participate. They just want to be entertained. So knowing the purpose is very, it's, it's like bringing a food to a, a dinner. You got to know what the what do people expect? What do they what do they want from you? Yeah. And just one last question, Izzy, uh, given what we've been through and given that the world we live in today um, do you think, I mean, humor, humor is such a is such a great release and all of that. Do you see this becoming more, you know, people looking more at improv and humor and stuff in, yeah, their, in yeah. their relationships and in their interactions, just because we've been through such a heavy time in so many different ways that I think people are craving something a little bit lighter? Yes, and, and my business shows that. So, for, for example, there's a lot of talk about resiliency. Humor is a resiliency aspect. There's a lot of talk about dealing with uncertainty. That's all about improv. There's a lot of talk about um, uh, tr not knowing what's what's coming up in the future. Improv. So this is this is the, the a, a perfect storm for both humor 
and improv skills, not for performance, but for life self-development. And that's actually my next workshop in a couple of months is going to be on self-development. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, I can I can only speak as uh, you know, coming from Ireland, like our 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 hum our humor is rooted in like a, a long and traumatic history, but it allowed us to one of the survival mechanisms is to be able to laugh at everything, right? So people always go, My goodness, in Ireland, is there anything you guys anything that happens that you guys can't find something funny in? I would just say, you know, I just finished watching the Dairy Girls, and that's really <sighs> a, a, a wonderful thing. That's humor in the midst of the troubles because it's about the people. And their perspective. So that's that's one that I would recommend from your from from that point of view. If, if oh, you can, if you can see it. Yeah, no, please. It's on it's on Netflix. If you can see Derry Girls, see Derry Girls. Some of you may need to put subtitles on, or you may need to. I always put button. subtitles on to the yeah. UK ones. <laughs> um, but this is this is based in Derry in in the north of Ireland, so it's like heavy, heavy, uh, you know, uh, Derry accents. But yeah, I, there, there's a classic example. Well, listen, Izzy, this has been fantastic, and as I you said, it. your your business is growing, and and people are seeing that uh, that these things. Uh, really matter and can help and like i said i think people are craving a little bit more a little something a little light yeah, as i said yeah. being surprised and in a good way i'm glad to answer any questions linkedin is is the best place izzyg.com is the site i have a room on clubhouse if, if people want to do that uh, at improv izzy so um th this is great i love I, I i love this conversation and uh yeah let's let's talk again sometime yeah, we will absolutely. So all of Izzy's information will be below this video. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner, CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Yeah.